Here's another easy to build compact starter house that I made on Valheim and in this video I'm going to show you how to build it. But before I do let me give you a quick tour so you know what to expect. Starting from the inside of the building you'll see that we have absolutely everything we need for a starter base including 24 storage chests, a comfort and cooking area, max level workbench, a sleeping area, max level forge and another storage area down the bottom. All the storage areas can be easily signposted and there's plenty of room to add in more comfort items as you progress throughout the game. Working our way outside, here we see this kind of bay area from the outside and the chimney at the back with some storage underneath for wood. If we go down this path to the left of the main entrance, we'll see that we have this farming area where we can grow turnips, carrots or anything like that in order to gain access to some of the better food at the start of the game. So now that you know what to expect, let's get into the build part of the video. The first thing we'll need to do is clear an area roughly 6x6 six six in size. So go ahead, chop down any trees and use your hoe to level the ground to roughly flat. Just remember that your hoe flattens the ground to the height that you're standing at so it makes sense to do as much as you can from a stationary position. Once you've done that, choose where you want your front left corner to be and place down a wood pole one meter. Now the initial floor plan for this is going to be six by four so I'm going to lay that out by using the wood beam two meters and placing a wood pole every so often just to support the beams above. Once you have this initial six by four rectangle you can go ahead and grab your wood floors and fill in this space in the middle. So now that we've got our main room built, we can add on all the extra shapes for things like our fireplace, come to the back of the structure, we'll add on another two by one rectangle and we can support that underneath. On what's going to be the front of the structure, we'll add another two by one for the outward bay window, again with the supports underneath. And at the corner, which is going to be our entrance, we're going to create a three by two area, which will be our sheltered entrance. Again, Go ahead and fill in your entrance with wood floors, also your window area and with the area for your fire, grab your hole and slightly raise the ground around this area and then level it out. And all that's going to allow us to do is basically place in the fires at the correct height before we've progressed in the game and unlocked stone. Now we can use our wood wall halves and go around the outside of the structure, of course leaving a space for our entrance here and not filling up any of the spaces that we need to enter such as this bay window and this fireplace. Now at this stage we can take out these wood beams at the bay window and at the entrance because they're only going to make it more difficult for us to move around our build. We can now do a lap with the full height wood walls until you're left with something like this. Now I've left space at the front entrance here for a window, also here at the bay window and I've also left out this area at the back which we're going to use as a chimney to extract the smoke from the fires. At this stage we can add in the doors. I'm going to grab the wood wall one by one, place it down at the front and connect the wood gates that. I think just having the little indent makes it look a little bit better and now we're at a stage that we can work on the roof. Start off by placing a wood floor 2x2 two two across the door like this and then using our wood floor 1x1s one start working our way along the length of the structure until we have an overhanging wood floor on each side of the long side of the structure. So you can see we've got it over this side on the chimney side as well and at the front here. All that's going to allow us to do is overlap the roof which is going to make it look a lot more interesting than just lining the roof up with the top of the walls. At this stage we can start to work on the roof. So go ahead grab your wood wall 26 degrees and link it in with the end of the wood wall which we just placed. Do the same on the other side and then with the wood wall 45 degrees we're going to have an overlapped section like this. Same on the other side and then we can rotate this round and create this little V section in the middle. Now grab the wood beam 45 degree, add it onto the top of each of these and place in a wood cross 45 degree at the top and in the centre like this. Go ahead and do the same at the other side and it should look exactly like this. Here we can start to place in the roof component so grab the thatch roof 26 degree and what we want to do is have it overlap in this beam and that's going to have the overhang on this side due to the wood floors and a small overhang here on the edge. We'll then follow the profile of the beams we just set up so that's going to be a thatch roof 45 degree and then a thatch roof ridge 45 degrees on the top. So this is what one column on one side will look like and just follow this along for the length of the structure. Once you're done, it should look like this. Now at this stage, if you want to add in some windows, what you're going to do is take out two panels like these ones here and replace them with thatch roof eye corners. And then we can put a wood trim along the top on the underside of the window here. We'll have a wood pole in the middle and a wood beam 45 degree like this. I'm going to pop in another one here. And that's all we need for the roof of the main body of our build. At the bay window, Take out any full length walls if you have placed them in like I did and grab your wood wall 26 degree inverted and place one on either side of the entrance to the main build. We'll then grab our thatched roof ridge 26 degree and our thatched roof 26 degree 
and place them like this. Now what we want to do is have it slightly overhanging so we're going to have a wood beam one meter here and then a two meter coming off the end of that. What this is going to allow us to do is use this as a lock point to have almost two overlapping roof components. We'll place in the roof ridge at the top and another roof on the other side. Finish this off by trimming each of the sides and what I like to do is drag this back into the ground. We have a wood pole one meter on either side and then also we can put our two meter in like this. All we're left to do now is work on the shelter for the entrance. So take out these two beams that we placed in earlier and we're going to place in wood stairs here. And that's going to mean that when we walk up the stairs, we don't get stuck on anything at this section. So similar to the main body of the build, we're going to want to trim this area with the wood floor one by one and get yourself up there using a ladder. We'll then make sure that we are overlapping onto the front here, add another component onto the top and then turn it around 180 and tie it back into the main body of the build. Now I'm going to trim along the ridge of the roof here and also on the edges. At the back I actually want this to be slightly more enclosed so I'm going to use the, I'm going to use the wood ball 26 degree and the wood ball halves just to fill in this back section here. Again we can add on the wood roof cross and trim off the edges. So now with all that done the only thing we have left is the fireplace. So I'm going to grab the thatch of 26 degrees and lock it off this half wall that I placed earlier and also off the bottom of the half wood wall here. We can then use this almost as a guide as to how we want the roof to be shaped. So it's going to be a wood wall 26 degree and a half wall and then a wood wall 26 degree. We'll have another thatch roof 26 degree along the top here and we can trim this all off with the wood beam 2 meters. Now similar to the window bay itself, I'm going to have the wood poles going down into the soil. If you're struggling to get a lock point for this, a good thing to do is just add in something like a wood wall half. Now you can use that place in the wood pole into the ground. Now the way that these wood beams kind of just end makes it look a little bit weird, so I'm going to tie this back into the structure with the wood beam 26 degrees. If you like, you can create a paved road using the hole and some stone around the entrance. And for the farm at the back, we're going to use the round pole fence and just connect into this back right corner. It's up to you how big you want to build it. I'm going to go maybe four out and then turn it in and just work this along until I have a reasonable sized path along the side of the house. So I think that's reasonable so I'm going to start to work back the way now and create this path down the side of the house. Using the cultivator I can patch this up with grass here and then also with the cultivator I can decide what area I want to have as a farm and mark that out. Now all we need to do is work on the inside windows so I'm going to fill up the rest of this space with the wood wall one meter and then with the inverted 26 degree and just place it in on either side have that window there and if you want to have a window here just do the exact same thing as I've done previously knock out two walls replace them with the wood wall 26 degree and if you really want to you can go around the edge of the window with wood beams just to trim it off. On the example build I had a little canopy here for this exterior window and all I did for that was take the thatched roof O corner, lock it into the top and use the wood beam 26 degree to make it look like it's been supported by that. So that's how to build the structure itself. I'm also going to do the interior here but if you're liking the video so far and you're still watching please do leave it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So for the interior the first thing I'm going to do is get a campfire set up just for a little bit of extra light in here whilst I work. So starting at the back of the structure I'm going to put in the storage. So that's going to use the wood wall half, a wood wall full and then we're just going to create different shelves at intervals like this and then with the wood beam one meter I'm going to work along the bottom of the builds like this and that's going to allow us to place in wood pole two meters like this and then in the center we don't actually need it to be to go as high as that so we're just going to have something like that. We can then take these ones out at the bottom because we're going to use the wood beam two meters and go along each of these lines. Now that you've got this initial grid you can come into the furniture tab and grab your regular chest start filling in all these boxes. Once you're done grab your signposts place them in at the top here and if you think it's a little bit too dark you can use a ladder take out this pole right here and grab yourself a standing wood torch. Now all you're going to do is place it in like this and it should protrude out the top then you can replace the wooden pole like this. Call this whatever you want something like the meadows and black forest might be a reasonable place to start and then we're going to do the exact same in this corner over here and once you're done it'll look like this next up for our comfort section we'll of course need to add in some cooking stations now you can actually just line these along like this then we have a simple bench maybe a couple of deer rugs and a chair now i want to divide this area up a little bit more so i'm going to just put in this little half wall here another one at the other side 
and just create this sort of pathway through. I'm going to use this area on the right for workbenches. So with the workbench in, we can start to place in some of the improvements just around and about. I have the chopping block down here, the tool shelf on the back. We'll have the tannin rack in here. Now don't worry if you don't have all these improvements yet because these are something that you develop through time. These are improvements for the workbench that will take it up to its maximum level. But you don't have access to all of these at the start of the game. They require you to find different materials and then the recipes for them will be unlocked. The only thing left is this improvement here, which we will just place on top of the door. Now, just because it looks a little bit strange on the door, I'm gonna also just trim around the edge here with the wood beams. I'm gonna automate it, go around the inside wall of the building. So if we go onto our workbench, we'll see that we now have a level five workbench, which allows us to build all of these things on the right. Looking a little bit dark in here, so we'll start to throw about some wood torches, pop one in here, and the only thing we really need other than this is a bed. So let's get one of these set up. With the wood beam two meters, we'll come along and we'll place in a wood floor. I wanna create this sort of headboard area. So I'm gonna use two wood walls and a full wall, to create this shape here. We can then grab our regular bed and place this in. And with it being up a level, it just allows us to have an extra place where we could put in some chests. Because even though we have a organized storage system, sometimes when you come back from a long day exploring, you just want to dump all your things in some random chests to basically fix at a later date. So we've got that, and as you can see, we still have a lot of spare space here. So it really depends what you want to place in. You could use it to increase your comfort level. However, there is still a lot of space up top to sort of squeeze the most comfort out of this base. So for example, if you don't already have a table in your build, you can place one up top here like this. If your light goes out when you place the table in, it just means you've placed the light too far back. So bring it forward a little bit, place it back in, and replace the wood pole that you removed. With this extra space that we found down the other end, I'm just gonna fill this in with the forge, but again, if you don't have this sort of stuff, since it is a starter base, don't worry about it too much. But I just want to demonstrate that there is plenty of space in this build for everything you need in the early stages of the game. Again, we're going to be a little bit sneaky with what we're placing in here. So for example, we're gonna put the grinding wheel up here. We can put the anvils over here somewhere. And as you can see, they're still connecting to the forge. Got our forge tools, just the forge coolers left. We'll place that in just there. So now that the forge area is done, that's pretty much all we need from this build. So that's it. You can see we've got the max level forge, max level workbench, sleeping area, plenty of storage, plenty of place to organize meals, and a level eight comfort with plenty of room to squeeze in an extra couple of levels wherever you need to. So that's how to build this compact starter house on Valheim. If you're still watching at this point, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see content similar to this in the future. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.